That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Ah, yes, today's Daily Dose of Stupid, and this one actually comes to you from CNN's very own Chris Cuomo, because Chris Cuomo is talking guns, and whenever that happens, you see a torrential downpour of stupid. Now, you may be sitting there and asking, Caleb, how is it in a week where Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez goes on a long and hilarious rant about white supremacy? that Chris Cuomo is the subject of your daily dose of stupid. Well, it's just that stupid. I considered AOC. I thought about it. It was a tough call. But ultimately, Chris Cuomo on guns is dumber than AOC on white supremacy. I'm sorry. AOC's got to step up her game if she wants to get back in the daily dose of stupid, and I'm certain that she will before long. But this week, it has to be the dumber of the Cuomo brothers, Chris Cuomo on CNN. So let's go ahead and check this out. This is Chris Cuomo at the town hall for CNN talking about the NRA and them being invited to this town hall. So check this out. We also invited the National Rifle Association, the NRA, to be part of tonight's conversation. They declined. They sent a totally disingenuous statement that they're open to honest discussion, but not this spectacle. That's what you call this, a spectacle? I guess they want to do their talking with propaganda ads and millions in lobbying. Besides, let's be honest, the gun lobby is not going to be the answer. And that shouldn't be expected any more than we expected big tobacco to help us expose the ills of smoking. The reality is, people like you are the answer. And there can be no sides when it comes to wanting to be safer, better protected. There just can't be. Not anymore. All right, so several great points coming from Chris Cuomo, the dumber of the, the Cuomo brothers there. So in this town hall, he specifically goes after the NRA for declining to show up. Now, you guys know that I am a, a big proponent of free speech and having an honest conversation, talking, giving a back and forth, and presenting your ideas as a foil, as a difference from your opponent, and trying to hash out which one is better based on an open dialogue. None of that applies here, and here's why. Yes, the Parkland Town Hall, remember that happened right after Parkland, the, the, the shooting in, in the Parkland High School at uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, that thing was an absolute spectacle. And so when Chris Cuomo is all offended by the, all right, that's what you call this a spectacle? Yes. Did you watch the CNN Town Hall after Parkland? The spectacle is tame compared to what I would call it. It was a bloodbath and not a bloodbath because the points they were making were better. It was like the two minutes of hate from 1984. I, that's what it resembled. The, the whole purpose of the event from its inception to its execution was they designed every aspect of it in such a way to make gun rights advocates look as terrible as possible, to look like horrible people that don't care when children die. That's what the whole thing was set up for. The game is rigged. And when you know for a fact that the game is rigged, there is no reason for you to play. I mean, if... Let's take it into something completely apolitical. Let's say that Auburn... And Alabama decided this year at the Iron Bowl, uh, Alabama said, all right, Auburn, you're going to come to Bryant-Denny this year, and uh, just so you know, um, we're only going to allow you six players on the field at any given time. And by the way, you have to go the full 100 yards to get a touchdown. Alabama will score a touchdown every time they get past the 20. Well, of course, Auburn would say, uh, no, we're not doing that. Or if it were reversed. I mean, if you're an Alabama fan, reverse it and imagine the same thing. When you know the game is rigged, when you know that it's designed specifically to make you lose, there is no reason for you to show up. And what's hilarious is that Chris Cuomo basically becomes the mean girl. You remember that movie, Mean Girls. I mean, he basically becomes a, a, a high school mean girl in which the girl would invite another girl that she doesn't like to a party or some kind of event specifically with the intention of humiliating her. 
And then that happens. And then the next time she invites the girl to a party, she says, well, you know, she, she's just a slut and she's just a coward and she doesn't want to come. No, you designed the whole thing specifically to make them look bad. And then you get mad when they don't show up for you to dump on them. That's what happened here. And when it comes to this, it's hilarious because Chris Cuomo proves the NRA's point. Basically in the same breath that he just repudiated them for not wanting to show up for the conversation. He admits in that clip, well, they don't have anything valuable to say. Well, the answers aren't going to come from the gun lobby. So you're saying you're admitting right there on air after saying that you're mad at them for not showing up that, well, they don't have any of the answers, so it's better that they're not here anyway. You didn't want to have an honest conversation. You didn't want to hear what they had to say. You didn't want to discuss the issues. You wanted them to show up so that you could dump on them. That's the only reason that you wanted them there. And when it comes to this, he says that, well, the, the answers aren't going to come from the gun lobby because we wouldn't expect them to help us any more than we would expect the tobacco industry to give us an, an answer when it comes to the, the dangers of smoking. I forget exactly how he worded it. Yeah, here's the thing. When did a cigarette ever prevent lung cancer? Anyone? Anybody? Can anybody point me to the cigarette that actually stopped a person from getting sick? Because if you can't, then it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison. Are guns used in evil ways by evil people to hurt people? Yeah, that happens. This is an example of it. But there is never, an, uh, at any point in the use of tobacco, has any form of tobacco ever used to actually prevent someone from getting lung cancer. And in the, in the case of a gun, we know from that CDC study that I was citing earlier, three to five times the rate of gun crime are guns used for their correct purpose in defensive use of firearms. And so it's really no comparison here. But there are... Another thing that he said there at the end that kind of stuck in my craw, he just said that, well, there are no sides to wanting to be safer. I agree. There's nobody in this world that I'm aware of that wants to be not safe. But do you know what I do to make sure that I and the people around me are safe? I carry a gun. And anybody that wants to make that process of me owning a gun so that I can protect the loved ones around me, anybody that wants to inhibit that, I see that person as a danger. And so you can't say, well, when it comes to this, we, we all want to be safer. What he means by that is we should all want there to be no guns. That's what he's saying. No, I want a gun, and I disagree with you specifically because I do want to be safer. Look, people on the right and people on the left, even though I disagree with the left and you can see the hours and hours of footage I've done explaining why, I get that we both want to be safe. We have different answers to what will make us safer. The left, I believe mistakenly, believes that taking away guns is going to make them safer. The right believes that adding guns, or at least keeping them at the level that they are, is more likely to keep us safer. And so this whole disingenuous thing where he's trying to be like, well, the NRA just wants you to not be safe. If the NRA, or any gun advocate, do you really think that they would want their customers to not be safer? Because if your customer base dies, that kind of hurts business. Even if you believe that they were just these evil, greedy capitalists that cared nothing about their customers and only wanted to make money, well, they would still have a profit incentive for their customers to, you know, be alive. Dead people don't have gun rights. They're dead. And so, even if you believe that they didn't care about people, if you just believe they care about profit, your argument still doesn't make sense. But anyway, uh, this is not the only thing that Chris Cuomo said that was incredibly stupid about this whole thing. I mean, you saw right there, he says, oh, I don't think the NRA has anything profitable to say. They just want to do all their topping, uh, talking through propaganda. Again, 
proving the NRA was right, proving their own point directly after saying that they didn't want to show up and repudiating them for that. He proves their point by saying, oh, this was going to be totally biased if they showed up. He proves why NRA was wise to stay away from that town hall. But anyway, this is the, uh, the other side of that. Chris Cuomo tweeted out something about the Second Amendment, and this just proves that Cuomo is one of the worst possible people you could get to host a gun town hall because he knows nothing about it. And this is proof of that. Here's a tweet from earlier this week by Chris Cuomo. So he says, do you remember what the 2A Second Amendment was created for? That there was no individual right contemplated until Scalia read it, read it in? If you are an originalist about the Constitution, you have no basis for thinking you and not the state controls access. <laughs> Anybody that has studied this issue for more than 10 consecutive seconds knows this is a load of crap. Even extremely far left liberal justices, I mean way on the left, wouldn't say that nobody even contemplated an individual right to own guns before Scalia in the Hiller case in 2004 decided in the prevailing opinion that that was the case. Now, you could say that Scalia's opinion, which I would say that it predates Scalia's opinion by quite a few years, the founding of our country. But you could say that Scalia is the one that solidified it, but that school of thought existed way before Scalia just came up with it. But the thing is, I guess Chris Cuomo believes that history actually started in 2004 because he kind of missed that, oh, about 200 year span between the Constitution and 2004 where everybody assumed that you did have an individual right to own guns. This is well documented in the entire history of the court. And again, I've done so many videos on the Second Amendment and gun rights. Feel free to go through those for more confirmation of it. But since Chris Cuomo is going to pull the originalist card, okay, let's go to originalism. Let's look at what the founders, what the people that actually wrote the Bill of Rights had to say about it. Let's go first to George Mason. George Mason is regarded as the father of the Bill of Rights. While James Madison actually penned the Bill of Rights and he penned the Constitution as well, it was George Mason, an anti-federalist, that insisted that a Bill of Rights be included or it would lose his support. And eventually, he thought that it was actually not good enough, not anti-federalist enough for him to sign, on, uh, sign off on. George Mason never signed the Constitution. But George Mason was so incredibly instrumental to the crafting of the Bill of Rights that he's regarded widely as the father of the Bill of Rights. Even Thomas Jefferson talked about how instrumental he was to the Bill of Rights being included in the Constitution and eventually being ratified. This is George Mason. I ask, who are the militia? They consist now of the whole people except a few public officers. And this is George Mason in his address to the Virginia Ratifying Convention in June, uh, on June the 4th, 1788. So this is how the argument usually goes from people in Chris Cuomo's line of thinking, that Justice Scalia just invented the individual right. They're saying, well, because it talks about a well-regulated militia in the Second Amendment, even though this is completely misreading intentionally, the intent of the Second Amendment. They'll say, well, it's talking about the militia there. It's not talking about the individuals, not talking about citizens. Yeah, well, George Mason, the guy that is the reason we have a Bill of Rights, just said that the militia consists of the whole people, so that kind of pokes a pretty big hole in your argument. And what's hilarious about that is that their position is only public officers, in other words, only military, standing army, that those are the people should, that should have guns. What did George Mason say at the end of that quote? Except for a few public officers. Mason is specifically saying that the only people that aren't militia are people that are in a standing army. <laughs> the exact opposite of Chris Cuomo's position. In fact, this would have been the common understanding of what a militia was at the time of the writing of the Constitution. You had standing army and then militia. 
We won the war largely with the militia. We had a standing army too, but it was mostly volunteer soldiers that were not formally, uh, formally in the actual standing army. They were just volunteers that joined the militia, which by definition are people that are not a member of a standing army. They're regular citizens. But if that's not good enough for you, let's look at another quote by George Mason. That a well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people trained to arms is the proper, natural, and safe defense of a free state. That standing armies in times of peace should be avoided as dangerous to liberty and that, in all cases, the military should be under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. That is in the Virginia Declaration of Rights from June the 12th, 1776, which, by the way, became a template for the Constitution about 10 years later. George Mason copied a lot of his work and, and should have. But you notice again, this is George Mason saying that the militia is the people, and specifically contrast that with the military. He's saying that the well-regulated militia, or sorry, he doesn't even use well-regulated in that one. Oh yeah, he does. The, the, the well-regulated militia, which he says are the regular citizens, which he expounds upon and explains, they're the ones that keep the military in check to keep them from being tyrannical. You really think that we're going to be do that? Uh, we're going to be able to do that with fishing pikes? No. Mason is specifically pointing out a contrast in the military and the regular people which constitute the militia. So if you want to go down the originalist route, Chris Cuomo, oh, feel free to. I'll do that all day. But maybe George Mason's not enough for you. Well, let's go to the guy that actually penned the Bill of Rights. Granted, copying mostly from George Mason's work. But let's go to James Madison. James Madison said this, Besides the advantage of being armed, which the Americans possess over the people of almost every other nation, the existence of subordinate no governments to which the people are attached and by which the mil militia officers are appointed forms a barrier against the enterprises of ambition more insurmountable than any which a, uh, which a simple government of any form can admit of. James Madison from the Federalist, number 46, on January 29th, 1788. James Madison reflecting the exact same sentiments as George Mason, saying that it's the average citizen that is supposed to possess arms, and specifically the fact that Americans possess more arms than any other is what makes it virtually impossible to conquer us. Because it's not just our military. And any government, whether it's our own or whether it's a foreign one, it would be nearly impossible for them to conquer us specifically because we have guns. And we have more of them than any other country. All right, let's look at another quote from Madison. The ultimate authority... By the way, this is in that uh, same Federalist 46, so he's still talking about guns in the Second Amendment here. The ultimate authority, wherever the derivative may be found, resides in the people alone. Again. The people are the militia. The people are the ones that retain the power to have a Second Amendment to be able to bear arms. Another quote by James Madison. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people trained to arms is the best and most natural defense of a free country. James Madison from the Annals of Congress, 434, June 8, 1789. Now, you may notice there, if you remember the quote from George Mason a little bit earlier, that that sounds very much derivative of that. Again, that's because Madison largely copied uh, Mason's work. And there you have it, where he expounds upon, basically this is the original rough draft of the Second Amendment. It's just a little bit longer, it's a little less concise, where he says that the well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people. Regular citizens normal people, not armies. And so this idea that Cuomo is trying to peddle that, oh, well, the Second Amendment doesn't guarantee a right to the individual, just to militias. Yeah, you idiot, militias are the people. And we have that well-documented, look, I could go on and on about this. I could go on 
with several different founders and their quotes on it. But for the sake of time and today, we'll just leave you with the two men that were most important to crafting the Bill of Rights, George Mason and James Madison. And they both very clearly believed that the militia was the average person and that that average person had an absolute God-given right to keep and bear arms. And they did so specifically to keep out the threat of a government, foreign or domestic, from taking them over. But here's the thing. Even if we didn't have those quotes, even if we had none of that from Madison and George Mason, the argument still makes no sense. Absolutely none. Because if that's the case, what Chris Cuomo is asking you to believe is that the founders are so incredibly stupid, no, rather that they believe that you are so incredibly stupid that when the founders were getting together and thinking, hmm, we've got to put together a Bill of Rights, we have to let the people know what their rights are in this new republic that we founded. What do we need to put in there? Well, how about freedom of religion? Great. How about freedom of speech? Excellent. How about the freedom to congregate or to petition your government? Absolutely good. How about not having quarters, or sorry, having soldiers quartered in your private, uh, your private uh, dwelling? Yeah, that's a good one. How about property rights? Absolutely. By the way, we should also probably include that uh, a little disclaimer that just so you know, when you send troops into a battlefield, they should probably have guns. That's what Chris, Chris Cuomo was asking you to believe that the founders thought you were so incredibly dumb that you had to be told, hey, when you're sending troops into battle, send them in with weapons. Don't just send them in with nothing. <laughs> That's the argument. That's the argument that Chris Cuomo thinks you are dumb enough to actually believe. That the founders thought it was important to include instructions. Hey, when you guys are fighting battles in the future... Please give your your uh, military members, please give them a gun on the way out so they're not just, you know, running into <laughs> running into gunfire. Because that's the only other way that what Chris Cuomo is saying makes sense. Why would this be the only right out of all of them? Because, I mean, nobody says that free speech should only be allowed for certain people. Nobody is saying that freedom of the press ought to be only allowed to certain people. Well, except maybe some people at CNN, so maybe Chris Cuomo is on, the bo on board with that one. Nobody is saying that these rights only exist for a certain class of people, except all of a sudden when it becomes the Second Amendment, okay, well, that one is only addressing some of the citizens. It's not, a, it's not addressing everybody. Why would that be the only one that they included that wasn't universal? Their argument makes absolutely no sense. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus, but I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.